In this video, we're going to discuss operators, eigenvalues, and eigenfunctions. These are all really important concepts from linear algebra that help us understand Schrodinger's equation here in quantum mechanics. So, uh, so think back to when we first introduced Schrodinger's equation, right? I've, I've told you that it can be written in this form, right? Where you have H psi equals E psi. So this is commonly referred to as the operator form, right? So this is the operator form of the time independent Schrodinger equation, right? And you know, it, we call it that because we, we denote the Hamiltonian as an operator operating on a wave function, giving you an energy and a wave function and that same wave function back again. Right. Um, so this is a general form of what we call an eigenvalue equation. Right. So this is the same as a general eigenvalue equation. So in a general eigenvalue equation, you have some operator, which I'll use the capital Greek letter omega for the operator, omega hat, operating on some function. And that's going to give you some constant, which I'll use little omega for that, times that wave, times that function back again, right? Now, this omega, right, is our operator. And an operator in mathematics is really just anything that's telling you to do something, right? Um, in most cases in this class, that's going to be take a derivative. That's going to be some sort of derivative as your operator. But an operator can be anything. The addition symbol, right? Adding is an operator. Subtraction, uh, taking an integral, right? Anything that is in mathematics that's telling you to do something. Like it's not a function that's defining some um, you know, defining along some coordinate. It's not a, a number that's quantifying something. It's an operator. It's telling you to do something to a function or to a number. So, um, so that's what an operator is. So it's really not something super complicated as far as understanding what an operator is. It's just anything that's telling you to do something right now. The key here, um, in pointing out these eigenvalue equations is that these functions are the exact same. These should be the exact same function. And this omega should be a constant. This small omega should be a constant or a scalar, right? It should be a constant. So, um, so it, within the guise of an eigenvalue equation, the small omega, that's what we call the eigenvalue. And psi here, this function that should be the same on both sides, this is going to be the eigenfunction. Right? So essentially you get the same function on both sides. That's going to be your eigenfunction. The constant that results from that is going to be the eigenvalue. So in one of the previous videos where we looked at the free particle, where we looked at verifying that solution to Schrodinger's equation, that was essentially what we were doing. We were verifying that that wave function was an eigenfunction for that Hamiltonian operator and that it produced that energy eigenvalue, right? Um, so another way of thinking about verifying Schrodinger's equation, right? Verifying solutions to Schrodinger's equation, you're basically asking, is this wave function an eigenfunction of the Hamiltonian, right? Is psi an eigenfunction of my Hamiltonian operator? So that's another way to think about, um, you know, verifying these solutions to Schrodinger's equation. So let's, let's take an example, just a few functions and just look at, you know, verifying if something is an eigenfunction of, or yeah, an eigenfunction of that operator or not. So for the operator, we'll take the operator of the first derivative. So we'll take the first derivative operator in one dimension. And what I want to do is for a couple cases, just figure out if a certain function is an eigenfunction or not, right? Of this operator. So for the first function, let's look at e to the i k x. Right? So if we want to prove that this is an eigenfunction of that operator, what we need to do is operate on it see if we get the same function back again times some constant, right? So let's do that. So if we take the first derivative of e to the i k x, 
that's going to be equal to ik e to the ikx. Right. So since um, I and K are both constants, right, we do end up with that function back again. Right. So this same function on both sides. So because we get the same uh, function on both sides, then E to the I K X is an eigenvalue. Right. So that one is yes. So for the next example, let's look at E to the e to the kx squared. All right, so let's take the first derivative here of e to the kx squared. So uh, taking this derivative, right, you're going to basically do the power rule up top and bring all of that stuff down. So you're going to end up with 2kx e to the kx squared. So in this case, do we have, uh, is this an eigenfunction? Well, um, if we look at it on its face, right, you do see e to the kx squared on both sides, but since there's an x out front here, this is a completely different function than this, right? x times e to the kx squared is a different function from e to the kx squared. Right. So this guy is not going to be an eigenfunction. Right. OK, let's look at a different example. So let's say psi is equal to e to the kx. Right. So if we take the first derivative of e to the kx. And we should get k e to the kx. Right. Again, k is a constant, right? So um, so k is going to be a constant out front here. We see e to the kx on both sides. So that's going to be an eigenfunction, right? With k as the eigenvalue, right? Let's look at another example. Just one more. Uh, let's look at psi equals sine kx. So if we take the first derivative of sine kx, that's going to give us k cosine kx. So clearly sine kx and cosine kx are different functions. So those are not going to be, that's not going to be an eigenfunction of this operator. OK, so those are just a few quick examples of, you know, verifying whether something is actually an eigenfunction of a given operator. So in this case, we had the first derivative operator. There were two cases where it was an eigenfunction to where it was not. So why is this useful? So in quantum mechanics, this gives us a really good way to define any property in quantum mechanics. Basically, every single uh, property in quantum mechanics can be set up as an eigenvalue equation where you have the following type of, um, you know, framework for the equation. So you'll have, you know, some sort of energy, some sort of operator that pertains to an observable. So you'll have an operator for an observable. And by observable, I mean anything that's quantifiable in quantum mechanics. So the, you know, momentum, the energy, kinetic energy, potential energy, what have you, anything that could be measured for a quantum system is an observable. And you'll have the wave function. So you have some operator for an observable, you'll have its wave function, and then you'll have the energy of that observable, or I should just say value of that observable. And then you have the wave function back again. So every single observable in quantum mechanics, whether it's the momentum, the kinetic energy, the total energy, whatever, is going to have a corresponding eigenvalue equation that has this sort of format, right? And so basically almost every, so every observable in quantum mechanics 
is going to, you know, correspond to one of these equations where you can get it, solve these eigenvalue equations to, to quantify that observable in any system, right? So, you know, if you've had linear algebra before, then you know all about the nuts and bolts of eigenvalues and eigenfunctions. If you haven't, this video should give you everything you really need for the course. Now, there are a few more properties of eigenvalues and eigenfunctions that could be very useful in understanding some of this stuff, but you really just want to know the general framework of the equation and being able how being able to know how to verify if something's an eigenfunction of a given operator.